How's it going, everybody? Sunday Bible study. Early on a Monday. <laughs> even if you don't remember it, ended in a comma. Even if you don't understand this now, <clears throat> there's no capital letter at the beginning of that sentence. Again, it ended in a comma. Um, it will end in King James, though. As also you have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then on the day when the Lord Jesus returns, you will be proud of us in the same way we are proud of you. Now, the day of the Lord, I am not sure if that's when he returns versus his wrath beginning. And that all goes back to Revelation 6. And I think the day of the Lord begins here. And this is not Jesus returning. It's the great day of his wrath has come. For the great day of his wrath has come. I think the day of the Lord is at the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. See, I think this is the day of the Lord. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us for the face that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. I think this is the day of the Lord. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? It's not when he's returning to remove his sheep though there could be that simultaneous situation going on there's no clear cut i mean we can try to piece it together you know with the holy spirit's help of course without that you're just going to be dangling in the wind aren't we but um i just wanted to clarify how they worded it when Jesus returns. Because him returning. I don't think he comes twice. And him actually. Jesus actually returning. If I'm not mistaken. Is with his bride. With his church. Yeah, just stay with the study and we'll we'll get into all that, the Revelation study. I mean, we're only in Revelation 2 right now. We did look ahead, peek ahead at Revelation 6, just to help with Corinthians. Since I was sure of your understanding and trust, I wanted to give you double blessing by visiting you twice. For on my way to Macedonia, and again when I returned from Mac Mac Macedonia, then you could send me on my way to Judea. You may be asking why I changed my plan. Do you think I make my plans carelessly? Do you think I am like the people of the world who say yes when they really mean no? As assuredly as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom... Silas, Timothy, and I preach to you as God's ultimate yes. He always does what he says. For all of God's promise, it's very wordy in the New Living, and I don't know how accurate any of this is, so we're going to go back to the King James, but this is just to try to help us grab, grab hold of the concept. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. 
It is God who enables us, along with you, to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us and has identified us own by placing, has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts. I like that. He's identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts. As the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. Yeah, that's the calling. <laughs> and that's going to be at verse 22. See how much smaller all this is in the, in the King James? Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. So it's much shorter, but it's in the King's English. So you can get tripped up very easily. This is it's just unbelievably long. Just look at how long this is when I scroll. Now watch how quick this is. Hang on. Yeah. Might be about the same. I wonder if it's the same amount of words. Are y'all curious? I'm curious. 323 words in the New Living this is. Okay, hang on. 54. I knew it. <laughs> hey, I'm not a know it all, but uh, we knew it, right? Three twenty three, three fifty four, two fifty four, sixty nine more words. Sixty nine more words. That's a lot of. That's a lot of words. And I can just tell as I'm reading it. In the New Living, that it's very wordy. Very wordy. Anyway. Now I call upon God as my witness that I'm telling the truth. The reason I didn't return to Corinth was to spare you from a severe rebuke. But that does not mean we want to dominate you by telling you how to put your faith into practice. We want to work together with you so you will be full of joy for it is by your own faith that you stand firm. So this is a very watered down translation. I use it because it's my favorite for giving me the concept of what's going on. But there's a lot of times when I read something, I'm like, no, nah, that's not correct. This is not even from the, from the base textus receptus, the received text, which is the best we have, which was used to write the King James, completely different manuscript uh, in other words looking at the original greek scriptures and then transposing it is a document and then those documents were used to create the king james and the new living translation they're two completely different documents so you know, so let's read in the King James just to be sure, as also you have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus, in the day of the Lord Jesus. That's when he comes for his bride, and that's what he's talking about. Um. I guess the day of the Lord is when Jesus comes for his bride. And I don't know, I guess it's simultaneously. Because it says that we are his in the day of the Lord. So we've got the wrath that's taking place. Let's just do a Google search and see what you can come up with. The day of the Lord is when Jesus returns. What is the day of the Lord? Horrible website for the truth, but they're really good with giving you um, Bible verses that can help you discern. So all of this is Old Testament that I'm seeing. What is the day of the Lord? 
the phrase day of the Lord usually identifies events that take place at the end of history. Okay. Spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. Yeah, I mean, so it seems like the day of the Lord is the beginning. Because I just showed you what I think the day of the Lord is or or how it begins, I should say. That sixth seal. The day of the Lord is when Jesus returns. The day of the Lord. It says when Yahweh will punish and restore the whole world through Christ's first and second comings. Let's see, they said first and second comings. Mm -hmm. Tricky. <laughs> Uh, Wikipedia says an apocalyptic time of God's almighty wrath. That's what I think it is, which comes upon those who are deemed wicked. But in doing so, it's also, it's as if it's the time when he separates the sheep and the goats. And what Paul is saying in Corinthians is, uh, we will be in what we read in the other verse, I think it's first Corinthians five, that we will be found worthy not to be judged wicked, but will be his bride. So there's, there's just a lot going on there and I'm super tired. I'm sure I got a lot of brain fog, so I might be really rambling going all over the place, but we are really trying to also nail down a concept. And in this confidence, I was minded to come unto you before that ye might have a second benefit and to pass by you into Macedonia to come again out of Macedonia unto you and of you to be brought on my way towards Judea. So thanks for reading it there. We understood what that meant. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh, that with me there should be ye, yea, and nay, nay, should be yea, yea, and nay, nay, excuse me. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me, Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establish us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who have also sealed us and given us the earnest spirit in our hearts. So when you read 21 and 22, this goes right back to John 6, where Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It says, Now he established us with you in Christ and have anointed us is God. What he's saying is, is God's the one who has anointed you in Jesus Christ. It's not of your free will. And then it says, Who have sealed us and given us the earnest spirit in our hearts. So just for research, if you want to do some homework, John 6, 44, and John 6, 65. I sure hope I got that right. Yeah, it's 44. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. I will raise him up on the last day. That no man can come unto me except we're given unto him and my Father. Both those verses are telling you that it's God that does it. Which is what he said right there in verse 21. And went on to say in verse 22. Where is that also found? Well, it's in the New Covenant. I might have brain fog, but uh, the Lord can still help me teach the truth, right? What is the new covenant? 
I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, saith the Lord. And in those days, what does he say? I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And it clearly says in the next verse, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord, for they shall already know me. The Lord does it. Man doesn't do it. It says it right there. Man doesn't do it. But let's go back. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And you come right here and it says, now he which establish us with you in Christ and have anointed us is God <laughs> who have sealed us and given us the earnest spirit in our hearts. Plain and simple, isn't it? Free will. Free will is satanic. Free will is a satanic doctrine. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you, I came not as yet unto Corinth. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. By your faith ye stand. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, because God does, the Holy Spirit does. But it says our helpers. Because God ordained you to be a helper. <laughs> anyway. Let's do the longest uh, letter of the seven letters. It's Thatira. And unto the angel of the church in Thatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works. Notice he said works at the beginning and the end. And the last to be more than the first. And then he makes that statement. Interesting. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which call herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that committeth adultery with her into the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, unto the rest of you in that tyra, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him I will give power of the nations, and he shall rule them with an iron rod as vessels of the potter. They shall be broken into shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches i love you very much uh let me point out before we close that these letters are parables for us um they were literal letters written by john from the spirit and even even there in a parabolistic sense but there are no free will decisions to be made in your given sort of that's what I try to tell people. It's the illusion of choice. Bible verses trump other Bible verses. Some Bible verses are in the parabolistic sense. And then there's others, like we went over previous, that give you the straight doctrine that you can't do anything without God, that God's ordained it all. And then the ones that give you instruction, seemingly choice, those are more of a parabolistic writing to trip up the goats or the lost sheep. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.